Hi everybody, my name is Mr Barlow and welcome to episode 20 of the VCE Biology Podcast. This episode covers part of Unit 2, Area of Study 2, and I'll be talking about the way that organisms interact with each other, and it also includes information on food chains and food webs. So, organisms interact with each other all the time, but the most important way that one organism needs another is basically as a source of food, so as a source of energy. Now, if an organism doesn't eat, doesn't get food, doesn't get energy, it's going to die. So that's really the most important way that organisms need each other, and that's pretty much what this episode's going to be about. Now, the sequence of who eats who in an ecosystem can be illustrated by something called a food chain. So a food chain is basically a series of links between different organisms in an ecosystem based on feeding relationships, so who eats who. So each link is illustrated with an arrow, and the direction of the arrow indicates who eats who. So if an arrow goes from one organism to the next, so for example, if an arrow goes from a grasshopper, to a snake, it means that the snake eats the grasshopper. Now, the first link in a food chain is always something called a producer. So producers are autotrophs, which means that they make their own food. And more often than not, in fact, they make their own food via the process of photosynthesis. So more often than not, producers are plants. Now, every other organism in a food chain is a heterotroph. So heterotrophs get their energy by eating other organisms. So heterotrophs can't make their own food uh, like autotrophs can, so they must eat other organisms for food or, you know, energy. And heterotrophs are also called consumers. So food chains start with a producer, and then from that point on, all the other organisms in the food chain are called consumers. Now there are obviously different types of consumers in a food chain and I'm going to go through six of those types. So first of all there's herbivores and herbivores basically eat producers so basically herbivores eat plants. For example a koala is a herbivore it just eats you know eucalyptus leaves. Another type of consumer is a carnivore so carnivores eat other consumers so a carnivore that catches live prey is called a predator and carnivores that kind of are the last link in a food chain are called top carnivores. And you know, a great example of a carnivore is a lion. So another type of consumer is a parasite. So parasites live on or in and feed on another organism. And that basically causes harm to the other organism. Um, so a good example of a parasite is uh, head lice that you know feeds on uh, you and lives in your hair. Another type of consumer is a scavenger. So scavengers are consumers that eat dead animals. Uh, a good example of a scavenger is a vulture. And lastly, there's two types of consumers that basically act to recycle material or matter. So there's detrivores, and detrivores eat small particles of uh, dead plant or animal matter that accumulates as detritus. You know, it's normally the dead leaves at the bottom of the forest floor, maybe some dead organisms at the bottom of a pond or something. And so uh, detrivores also eat waste products. So, you know, poo, they'll also eat poo. And importantly, detrivores, you know, eat by eating, you know, so they consume it. So they've got a mouth um, and th- that's how they consume their food. Now, the other type of consumer, the last type of, you know, recycling consumer is something called a decomposer. And so decomposers are consumers that break down dead material, but they eat differently to detrivores. So, you know, detrivores put the food in their mouth Whereas on the other hand, decomposers, they secrete enzymes over the dead material and then they absorb the breakdown products as food. So we're talking about, you know, bacteria or uh, fungi are uh, types of decomposers. And that's the last type of consumer that I'll talk about. But I'll just run through them all one last time to, you know, help you remember it. So 
We've got herbivores, and that might be a cow. Carnivores, that might be a tiger. We've got a parasite, uh, could be a tapeworm in your gut. We've got scavengers, uh, yeah, I said vultures before. We've got detrivores, so that's something like a worm. And decomposer, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, some type of fungus or bacteria. So we talked about food chains before, and there's actually uh, many different types of food chains. For example, um, a plant, you might have a plant which is the producer, and then that plant might be eaten by a grasshopper, and then that's a herbivore, and then a mouse might eat the grasshopper, and then a snake might eat the mouse, and then an eagle might eat the snake. Another food chain might be, you might have some plankton in the ocean, the plankton's eaten by an itty bitty fish, that itty bitty fish is eaten by a bigger fish, like a snapper or something. And then the snapper is eaten by, you know, maybe the top order consumer, which might be a shark. So there's lots of different types of food chains, but food chains actually never really exist as just a chain. There's normally actually a series of food chains in an ecosystem all linked together. And when we've got a series of food chains all linked together, we call that a food web. Now each feeding level in a food web is called a trophic level. So the first trophic level is always the producers, so you know, the plants. And then the herbivores that eat the plants, that'll be the second trophic level in the food uh, web. And they'll also be the first order consumers at that second trophic level. So producers make up the first trophic level, and then the second trophic level is also first order uh, consumers, like herbivores. And then the third trophic level would be carnivores. So they're the third trophic level, but they're second order consumers. And then after that, you might have a fourth trophic level. So you'd have maybe some different carnivores, um, some in fact second order carnivores at the fourth trophic level, eating the first order carnivores at the third trophic level, which of course are eating the herbivores at the second trophic level, which are eating the producers at the first trophic level. And then you could even have a fifth trophic level, which might be the top order carnivores, you know, in that food web. So each of those levels in a food web is called a different trophic level. It starts at the first trophic level with the producers and then works its way up through the different types of consumers. So after listening to this podcast so, so far, you might be thinking, well, animals just interact with each other by eating each other. But in fact, organisms don't just eat each other. Sometimes they interact with each other in different ways. For example, two species might be living in the same ecosystem and they might compete for the same resources. So this is called interspecific competition. And this kind of competition might in fact limit one species distribution. So, you know, one species can't completely take over because there's this competition for resources. Another way that um, organisms can interact is that uh, sometimes two different types of organisms will live and function together in a close partnership. And that's actually called symbiosis. And there are different types of symbiosis. So there's mutualism, and mutualism is where both organisms in the partnership benefit. So an example of mutualism is, um, for example, bacteria living in a human's gut. So it's good for the bacteria because it's warm and they get food the whole time. And it's also good for the humans because the bacteria helps to digest the food that we eat. Another type of symbiosis is commensalism. And this is basically a symbiotic relationship where only one organism of the two benefits, but the other organism in the relationship is neither benefited nor harmed. So an example of that would be maybe a little tree called an epiphyte. Sometimes these you know, little trees, they grow on the sides of bigger trees. So this is helpful for the little trees, which is maybe a fern or a moss. Um, so it helps the fern because the little fern is enabled to get up closer to the sun by you know, getting more sunlight by being on the side of the big tree. And the big tree, you know, it doesn't really bother the big tree. It doesn't use the big tree's resources. The big tree um, gets its water from the ground. It's, you know, it's up high in the sky. So that uh, example of, you know, little trees growing on bigger trees is, is an example of commensalism. So now another type of symbiosis is um, parasitism. 
And this is a relationship between two organisms where one of those organisms benefits, but the other organism is harmed by the relationship. So uh, an example of parasitism in a human might be a tapeworm. So the tapeworm um, benefits because it eats all the resources in, in a human human's gut, but a human's harmed because it's, you know, taking resources from the human. So it's harming the human. So yeah, there's different types of symbiosis. There's mutualism, both organisms benefit. Commensalism, only one of the organisms benefit. And parasitism, one organism benefits, but the other organism is harmed. Now, another way that organisms interact with each other might be the way that um, bees or birds act as pollinators for flowers. So that means they take the pollen from one flower on one tree to another flower on another tree, and that basically helps uh, the, the plant uh, reproduce. So while certain, certainly that's a way that organisms interact with each other, it's not actually an example of symbiosis um, because the organisms don't live together you know, in a close partnership. And that brings episode 20 of the VCE Biology Podcast to a close. I'm Mr. Barlow, and thanks for listening.